Abu Dhabi, capital of the United Arab Emirates, and the location of a financial controversy of huge fortunes won and lost. It's a story that revolves around the man on the left, the Indian billionaire tycoon, Dr. B. R. Shetty. For several months, Tamar al Mishal of Al Jazeera's Arabic channel followed a money trail in which the numbers involved are quite staggering. He looked into a man who owes millions, and in one case, over a billion US dollars. At the center of this debt crisis is NMC Health, an Abu Dhabi based hospital provider with a global reach. It seemed that NMC was riding the crest of a wave. Healthcare spending in the UAE was high, with patient numbers in the millions. The company had expanded into Spain, Saudi Arabia, and the UK, with some 20,000 medical staff operating around 200 facilities. NMC's charismatic founder, B.R. Shetty, was well connected in the UAE counting among his friends the Under-Secretary of the Crown Prince Court of Abu Dhabi, Mohammed Mubarak al mazrui The Al Jazeera Arabic team discovered correspondence between the two men, at a time when the true scale of NMC's debts was starting to become public knowledge. It was January 2020, and Shetty was seeking a meeting with his friend the advisor to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi. As Shetty revealed the nature of NMC's debt crisis, the advisor said that he was out of town, but they agreed to meet the following week at an Emirati Ocean Palace. Shetty's meeting with Al Mazrui at the end of January was targeted at a higher level. Shetty needed to engage with Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi. The discussion at that meeting is known only to those who took part. But what is certain is that shortly afterwards, B.R. Shetty flew to India and did not return. A series of outwardly friendly messages followed between Shetty and al Mazrui including reference to a private letter from Shetty to the Crown Prince. Al Jazeera wrote to the Under-Secretary of the Crown Prince Court of Abu Dhabi, Mohammed Mubarak al mazrai wanting to discover more about his January meeting with B.R. Shetty. It also asked to see the letter from Dr. Shetty to the Crown Prince. But no reply was received. But by that time, Shetty's NMC empire had begun tumbling down. The first rumblings of financial trouble were in December 2019, but by March 2020, global confidence in NMC was in freefall, as was the company's openly traded share price. NMC announced that it had discovered suspected fraud and that hidden debts amounted to over 4 billion US dollars. The Al Jazeera Arabic team has spoken to those close to Shetty. Questioning former associates and financial experts, in this program they piece together the evidence which now reveals the previously untold story of the rise and fall of a self-made Indian billionaire. Sayyid Kostas, you were very close to Dr. B.R. Shetty. Was this the end of the story? I was never expecting it. Never. Never. I fall from the clouds. Dr. Shetty also was a big philanthropist. He helped thousands of people and organizations. Uh, recently, two years ago, he pledged also in the organization of uh, Bill and Melinda Gates to give half of his uh, fortune he was giving back to the society. Uh, for example, they say he has uh, two floors on Burj Khalifa. He bought two, yeah, but why he bought it? 
Why? Think a little bit. By buying them, he is giving back to the government. Tama wanted to know how Shetty's empire fell so far, leaving a long trail of debt in its wake. The tycoon was clearly well connected and had a long track record of business success. So where did it all go wrong? كيف أن شيتي ومعها مدراء وشركاء وهو مركز صحي يستطيع أن يستغفل بنوك ما يقل عن 12 بنك في, في الإمارات شوف أخي نحن عندنا في الإمارات قاعدة معروفة هناك في الإمارات في درج عادي سلم عادي تقليدي وفي مصعد سريع يشيلك فوق بأسرع ما يمكن وهو ربطك بنفوذ وعلاقة خاصة مع المتنفذ في الإمارات فلا يستطيع شيتي أن يقفز هذه القفزة دون أن يكون هناك دعم ونفوذ خارجي من من بعض المتنفذين But who is B.R. Shetty? Growing up in India, he trained as a pharmacist in the western city of Manipal Then in 1973, he traveled to the United Arab Emirates to, as it were, seek his fortune Two years later, he founded New Medical Center Health, NMC, responding to the demand for quality health care in the UAE. Very quickly, the business expanded as new clinics opened across the country. With large numbers of foreign workers in the UAE sending their earnings back home, Shetty also saw an opportunity in money transfer and opened a chain of outlets called UAE Exchange. Business was booming, and Shetty was in the right place at the right time. Building relationships with the UAE's all-powerful sheikhs appeared to open doors for Shetty, and his ambition knew no bounds. A tycoon was born. And thanks to His Highness Sheikh Zad bin Sultan al peace be upon his soul, and he is giving open arm welcome to anybody. So when I came here, no job opportunity because I'm a pharmacist. When I came here, my brother, mother advised me, Sagu, whatever you want to do, do something good to the community. Keep the community in mind. And when I came here, his highness, Sheikh Zayed, black and white TV, he was telling quality health care for all at affordable cost. So I started the first private clinic, my wife being the doctor, first doctor in NMC. And one room clinic we started. As on today, we have got 200 facilities, 208 facilities in 19 countries, 3,000 doctors, 8.5 million patients a year. Even till today, it is 7.5 to 8 billion dollars, which is, I'm very happy. And what the, what the capital? My sweat, bank money, and the blessing from the royal family. Tamar al Mishal and his team obtained documents that show how close Shetty was to senior political figures in the UAE. One name, the former Justice Minister Abdullah Homeid al Mazrui, appears in these documents as a Shetty business partner. Government ministers having private business interests in the Middle East is not unusual or illegal and the partnership proved profitable for both men. Another associate is Nahyan bin Mubarak al-Nahyan, the current UAE Minister of Tolerance. This power of attorney document reveals that as culture minister, he authorized Shetty to be his official representative in Shetty's pharmaceutical business, Neopharma. To find out more about Shetty's business methods, Tamar al Meshal tracked down one of his close associates in the UAE, a longtime observer of BR Shetty. He agreed to be interviewed on condition that he remain anonymous and his voice be disguised. Sir, can you tell me about what do you know about Mr. BR Shetty? And how did he manage to reach this position in the UAE? 
uh, I've had some dealings with the man over the years. Uh, he's a very charming man. Uh, he's known to have silver tongue. That's what they call him, the man with the silver tongue. And he's a very smart guy in terms of his relationships with people. He is extremely manipulative. His skills are not as a doctor, and his skills are not as a businessman. His skills are in charming and manipulating other people and getting what he wants. And he's done this extremely well. He's had close dealings with the Emirati people for a long time. He knows what buttons to push. He knows what to say to get their trust. And in fact, uh, over time, the influence of uh, Dr. Shetty became less and less and less. And certainly, there's no doubt he was aware of what was going down the whole time. In 2011, there were changes at the top of the NMC group. Abdullah Humaid al mazrui the former justice minister, was removed. al mazrui would later say that the amount he received for his shareholding was less than it was actually worth. In his place came two young investment specialists from a company called Centurion Partners Investment. They were Khalifa al muheri on the left and Saeed al kubaisi There were plans to float the NMC Healthcare Group internationally, a move that would bring in new investors from across the globe. In 2012, NMC became the first Abu Dhabi company to be listed on the London Stock Exchange. The initial public offering, or IPO, raised 186 million US dollars. Investors from across the world sought a slice of the action. But what was the significance of NMC's London Stock Exchange listing? For NMC, it's very important. Uh, it gains access, it gains credibility. It gains access to institutional investors. It gains access to individual investors, retail investors. And as the company grew in this case, it becomes part of the FTSE 100 index. And as it does that, it gathers assets from index invest investors around the world. Clearly, this company had enormous influence in the United Arab Emirates government. It was branded as one of the most successful firms that uh, the United Arab Emirates ever spawn off. Uh, it was touted around the world as a shining success story. With the former justice minister no longer involved following the London listing, the new Emirati power brokers within the Shetty Empire were Saeed al kobesi and Khalifa al muhairi But some questioned their suitability for the job. Sayyid Jassim dakhala ala al khat Khalifa al muhairi wa Saeed al kobesi fi al sharaka ma Shetty. Tarikhiyan, hal لهذين الشخصين أي خلفية استثمارية معروفة؟ هذين الشخصين خلفيتهم أنهم كانوا يعملون في جهاز بضابي الاستثمار أو البنوك أو غيرها أو آيبك فقط لكن لم يعرفوا في الإمارات أنهم رجال أعمال مثل الباقين اللي هم الموجودين بالإمارات ولهم باع كبير فيها وخاصة هم أعمارهم صغيرة يعني ما يتجاوزون 39-38 سنة بالتالي ما السر؟ السر أن هناك داعم خلفي لهؤلاء الأشخاص. Regarding Mr. Khalifa Al Muhairi and Saeed Lukbesi, how do they fit in to that relationship? So the way it works in UAE in particular is that they don't like to have these, you know, senior people uh, signing documents. They they don't like this. They hire you know trusted non-royals to do their signatures and be the you know the the, uh, uh, the local uh, fund men but these people are really acting in a proxy position so Mary and Kabesi, yeah you know they're 
their role was acting on behalf of uh, the Sheikh. But NMC was owned by uh, Sheikh Mansour, who's a member of the royal family of uh, Abu Dhabi. And uh, he's the brother of uh, uh, the current uh, crown prince. So NMC is really a very powerful, powerful uh, organization. In the end, anything they did, anything they tried, had to be signed off by uh, the real owner, who is Sheikh Mansour. Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, often referred to simply as Sheikh Mansour, is the Deputy Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. But did the billionaire Sheikh play an unseen role in the Sheti Empire? And what was his connection to the new NMC power brokers Al Qubaisi and Al Muhairi? Al Jazeera wrote to Sheikh Mansour asking if he would comment on the allegation that. Saeed al Kabesi and Khalifa al Muhairi of Centurion Investments acted as proxy directors on his behalf, and that their shareholding was managed for his benefit, giving him effective ownership of NMC Health. But no reply was received. Sheikh Mansour holds several other positions at the very top of Emirati politics and society. His business interests are vast. Estimates put his net worth as high as 20 billion US dollars. Sheikh Mansour, لم يعرف عنه تاجر ولا بزنس ما ولكن فترة الأخيرة بعد الشيخ زايد زايد رحمه الله قفز فجأة إلى أنه أصبح من أثر أثرياء الإمارات بقيمة 5 مليار دولار ثروته. طبعا الشيخ منصور كما يعني يسمى البرج هو بين القطاع الحكومي والقطاع الخاص. مثلا عنده واحد مثلا مئات الملايين ولا يستطيع ان يتاجر فيها او يقوم بها مباشره فيضعها عن طريق هذه المؤسسات سواء مبادله او ايبك او غيرها وبالتالي تحقق له ارباح وايضا لا تكشف حقيقه ملاءته او ثروته للجمهور لذلك يحاور يخفي الخطوط بين المؤسسه الحكوميه والقطاع الخاص أو الثروات الخاصة للحكام وزير المالية يعرف الموضوع هذا <تصفيق> فالأخوان ماشيين في الموضوع والمجال هذا لمراقبة البنوك لأن عندنا بنوك وطنية وعندنا بنوك أجنبية ففي عندنا ضعف في بعض القوانين نحن نحسن القوانين للمصلحة مصلحة الدولة و النصيحة اللي أنا صحة الأخوان المواطنين لا تأخذ قرض إلا إذا أنت بالفعل محتاج أنك تأخذ قرض B.R. Shetty's business interests were huge. At their core was the NMC Healthcare Group, providing hospital facilities in the UAE and several other countries. Then there's Finabler, a global platform for payments and foreign exchange. With millions of foreign workers in the Middle East sending money back to their home countries, this is a lucrative business. Travelex and UAE Exchange are two of Finabler's flagship brands. There's also Neopharma, a factory manufacturing prescription medication. Other parts of Shetty's business empire include companies in Oman and Morocco. يعني المسؤولين بالإمارات بشكل عام خاصة أصحاب النفوذ الشيوخ لا يريدون أن يخرجون بالصورة باستثماراتهم لأسباب كثيرة. أنا بتأكد يكون هناك كبش فداء. So was Shetty made the scapegoat for the decline of his business empire, or was he the architect of his own misfortune? A search of registered companies in Abu Dhabi reveals an intricate web of different organizations, some in Shetty's name, others under Shetty and his business partners. Are these legitimate trading companies, or is there a different explanation for them? لا يوجد هناك في القانون الإماراتي ما يلزم الشركات بأن يسجلوا من هو المالك الحقيقي لهذه الشركات عندما يأتي الوسيط 
او مكتب المحاماه او اي شخص بتسجيل هذا تسجيل هذه الشركه هذه الشركه تابعه ل لاخرين ويكون لديهم وجه اخر يقوموا بتسجيله وارسال الاموال عبر هذه الشركات فتصبح الامارات ملاذا امنا احدى الملاذات الامنه لهؤلاء لهؤلاء الفاسدين او المجرمين حسب تقريرنا الاخير نحن نعتقد ان الامارات العربيه الان تشكل جزءا مهما في خارطه غسيل الاموال العالميه والدول التي لديها هذه الاجراءات الركيكه التي يمكن ان تؤدي الى استغلال الفاسدين لهذه لهذه الدول. There's been business relationships not just in NMC but in other companies as well. I think what's evident is that the problems at NMC uh, may be replicated in other companies such as Fenabler. Um, which also has had undeclared debt. Um, so th there is definitely questions around, you know, how this relates to some of the other companies, and where does the, uh, you know, where does the rot spread? H how far does the rot spread? Uh, because it certainly doesn't seem to be just, um, you know, specific to NMC. هناك <laughs> الكثير. Tamar al Mishal asked Biar Shetty's former colleague about the expansion of the UAE based companies, particularly in healthcare. What interested him was the pace of this expansion and therefore whether there was anyone of influence behind this exponential growth. I understood from some things that uh, money was actually thrown away uh, for no reason. For example, I was working in a hospital, a 102 bed hospital. It was never full, and suddenly, 2017, they decided to build another hospital next to it, 400 beds, 400 million of dirham. For what? We don't get, we don't fill up the one we have. Why we need the next one? How and why the Shetty Empire fell so spectacularly is a story in itself. It was 2018, and it seemed that Shetty could do no wrong. The NMC group was riding high on the London Stock Exchange, and investors queued up to buy shares. Its market value was more than 8 billion US dollars. It owned more than 200 facilities, including hospitals and clinics in over 19 countries. And its annual profits for the year were over $2 billion. What could go wrong? Coming up in part two, the spark that sent Dr. B. R. Shetty's business empire into freefall, amid allegations of a billion dollar fraud. The tycoon flees to India. I don't believe Dr. Shetty would do anything on his own. I believe that he was probably given advice to leave. Uh, Dr. Shetty claims innocence in the events that have taken place. He is portraying himself as a victim. He is suggesting that third parties have fraudulently represented him and have forged his signature. The Indian billionaire, Dr. B. R. Shetty, made his fortune in the early 2000s, building a vast business empire encompassing hospitals, pharmacies, and money exchanges. But it did not last. Tamar al Mishal of Al Jazeera Arabic has established that at the core of Shetty's financial success was his healthcare business based in the United Arab Emirates, NMC Health. But that it also included the currency firms Travelex and UAE Exchange, and a medication manufacturer, Neopharma. However, the blow that caused it all to falter in 2020 came not from the Middle East, but from an unexpected source in the United States. The American investment firm Muddy Waters takes its unusual name from a Chinese proverb that says, muddy waters make catching fish easy. The company seeks out publicly listed companies that appear outwardly in good health, but which in reality are deeply unstable. Then they what's called short the stock, betting that when the financial truth comes out, the share price will tumble, so making a healthy profit 
for Muddy Waters. Muddy Waters founder Carson Block is what's known as a short seller. That is, he speculates on the future decline of a company's share price. So a lot of people hear short seller and they think that you're you're a bad guy or you're doing something wrong. Carson Block of Muddy Waters, the investment firm, announced a big short short seller, Carson Block. We heard from the uh, NYSE president uh, this week, and he said that short selling against a company feels kind of icky and un-American. Yeah, I've been called a lot of nasty names. I've been called a financial terrorist. I've been called a fraud. So you have no regrets? Why would I? In December 2019, Muddy Waters published a damning report into the state of NMC's finances. It said the Middle East hospital chain had grossly understated its debt and overstated its cash. NMC shares plummeted by 48%, wiping $1.5 billion off the Shetty family fortune. Muddy Waters claimed that NMC's performance was, quote, too good to be true, and the market believed them. The Muddy Waters report is an interesting document. It's quite low key but it's very specific in terms of its accusations. It identifies issues with revenue recognition. It identifies issues with the prices paid for certain assets. At the same time, the report questions the margins, the operating margins of the company. The company was reporting margins in its first half 2018 uh, results of 24 uh, 20, sorry, 26.6% uh, in the first half of 2019, and it was reporting year-on-year -year growth of 32.6% in revenue. And Muddy Waters simply looks at the peer group that was operating in the same markets and the numbers that were coming off, being thrown off by that peer group and says those numbers are not possible. It also suggests that the company was... Uh, um, the company was declaring costs of debt which were inconsistent with the size of debt that was on the balance sheet. It identifies undeclared leases um, and on top of that it points at issues of governance and specifically of independence. The Muddy Waters report also affected another Shetty company, Finabler. It's a large payments and money trading business, the umbrella firm for two big high street brands, Travelex and UAE Exchange. Al Jazeera asked Carson Block why exactly he had targeted NMC. He replied, It was a fraud with a whole host of issues. What we were surprised about was how massive the fraud was. We knew there was more debt at NMC than reported. For the company to reveal that there was in fact $6.6 .6 billion instead of the $2.1 billion was remarkable. Tamar al Nishal asked a Financial Times journalist how an MC was able to hide what was going on inside the company. Uh, yeah, it's the million dollar question. Um, you know, there were certainly red flags. Um, there was red flags that, you know, in, in the case of Muddy Waters, they picked up certain um, red flags within the accounts. Um, broadly, analysts were actually very supportive of the company. It's clear that the financial statements produced by the company for some period have been a pack of lies. It's also clear that there is collusion between a group of executives inside and outside the company in manipulating those accounts to be a pack of lies. But the most concerning thing of all is that these accounts are audited by one of the most well-known accounting firms in the world, Ernst & Young, EY, whose responsibility it was to check the accounts of NMC and to identify a fraud like this a long time before it reached the proportions that it, that it eventually uh, attained. So why did NMC's auditors Ernst & Young fail to flag the financial black holes in the company's accounts? And was there a potential conflict of interest with former Ernst & Young staff serving on the board of one of Shetty's companies? 
For their part, the auditors said in July 2020 that they'd flagged problems at NMC as early as March 2019. In their audit memo, EY called on NMC to, quote, strengthen its internal control process in dealing with banks. I mean, I think EY is going to be under a lot of pressure as a result of what's happened here. Um, uh, you know, again, it's an issue when you look at you look at the company, you can see that there are a couple of former EY employees on the board of NMC. Also, at various points, the uh, EY was making quite a lot of money out of non-audit work for the company as well as doing the audit for the company. What we do know is that in, in the UK, the Financial Reporting Council, which is kind of the regulator for financial reporting, uh, is already uh, instigated an invest investigation into EY's um, auditing of the most recent set of accounts. Um, but I suspect this is going to be, um, this is not going to be a pleasant experience for the audit firm, certainly. Al Jazeera asked Ernst & Young to comment on the allegations that there were shortcomings in their 2018 audit procedure and that two former EY partners serving on the Finabler board was a conflict of interest. They replied saying it was not their policy to comment on the companies that they audit. They added that, quote, EY has policies and procedures in place to ensure we comply with relevant ethical standards. What had been a rising star of the London Stock Exchange had come crashing down to earth. Shares were suspended and an independent panel was appointed to inquire into the company's finances. Saeed al Kubesi, Khalifa al Moheri, and B. Arshetti all resigned from the board. Tamar also asked Tom Powdrill about the impact of the NMC case on the London Stock Exchange. I think if it wasn't for the fact that there was a global health emergency underway, this would be an enormous story. And it has been hugely embarrassing to London uh, as a market. I mean, again, you know, I think it's worth restating, you know, there are two companies involved here. NMC is the FTSE 100 that's, that's gone down, and then Finabler's a FTSE 250. I've been working in this field for almost 20 years, and I've never seen an, a story like this where two companies simultaneously involving the same group of people have failed at the same time. It's been enormously damaging um, to our reputation that we, you know, we repeatedly trumpet as a kind of like bastion of good corporate governance. So it's been it's been hugely damaging. I don't think you can, you know, I can't think of a, a previous case like it. But equally, I do think we're going to have to look again at listing rules. Um, you know. There are certain features of companies like this that I just don't think really are acceptable to a public market. And I think, therefore, you do have to, again, look at the regulation at some point. It is the biggest scandal uh, on the stock exchange, one of the biggest scandals on the stock exchange, since uh, ENRC, the natural resources company, and Boomi, another um, natural resources company, earlier in the decade. So I think it's too early to say uh, I think we need to have the evidence and the information. Uh, we are all only seeing snippets and not the full picture. And I think there'll be a lot more to come. Uh, the United Arab Emirates has become a magnet for capital and investment from around the world. It's trying to become another Singapore, another London. And it's been very successful. But clearly there are some problems. Uh, if you look at the um, NMC scandal, uh, it's very disturbing that the executive committee didn't catch it. Uh, the fact that uh, it was bankrupt, uh, it, two billion dollars in de debt became six billion dollars in debt. Uh, the banks didn't catch it. The auditors, Ernst and Young, didn't catch it, and has created a massive scandal that will impact the United Arab Emirates because the United Arab Emirates prides itself on having the best functioning, the best managed and the most sophisticated uh, legal system in the Middle East for corporate governance. Clearly, it failed spectacularly here. On the surface, this looks like a complex financial story, business failure on a grand scale. But it's actually a simple matter of governance, the ethics of how companies manage the money that passes through their hands. Al Jazeera wrote to one of the leading figures involved in the rise and fall of the Shetty Empire, Sheikh Nahyan al-Nahyan, 
the UAE's current Minister of Tolerance. It asked him to confirm that as a former chairman of the medical manufacturing business Neopharma, the minister had authorized Shetty to be his official representative. The ministry replied, but only to say that Al Jazeera's email had been received and had been sent to the relevant department. Tamar al-Mishal wanted to know if there had been clear alarm bells over NMC's governance at a time when the UAE was warned, as recently as April 2020, of the risks of a weak financial regulatory framework. حسب تقرير مجموعة العمل المالي فتف وهي منظمة حكومية دولية مقرها في العاصمة الفرنسية باريس تهدف المجموعة إلى محاربة تزوير العملات وتمويل الإرهاب وغسيل الأموال وأعطى التقرير تصنيفا منخفضا لعمليات التحقيق والمحاكمة بشاء الغسل الأموال وتصنيفا متوسطا للإجراءات الوقائية والعقوبات المالية المرتبطة بمكافحة تمويل الإرهاب في الإمارات وبالتالي سوف تضع الهيئة العالمية المعنية بمراقبة الأموال غير القانونية الدول الخليجية المتحالفة مع الولايات المتحدة تحت المراقبة لمدة عام وإذا يعني هذا الموضوع يعطي مؤشر أنه بسبب وجودها كمركز أو وجود الإمارات كمركز مالي واستثماري مهم يضعها تحت تحت المراقبة uh, The Financial Action Task Force report which has recently come out uh, is a comprehensive look at the money laundering and terrorist financing problems around the world. And these problems are in every country, but certainly the Middle East is a focal point for that. And the UAE has fallen down on properly policing these. Uh, this leads to international scrutiny, international concern. It means the UAE is not always the best partner in the region in terms of uh, security concerns and other concerns. And that the UAE continues to be at the top of the concerns that many people have, that money laundering can still be done there, uh, which threatens its uh, future as a financial center. Because if the money laundering problem is not eventually solved, eventually there will be sanctions from other countries because this kind of thing cannot go on indefinitely. So what of the man at the center of this story of fortunes won and lost? At the height of his success, B.R. Shetty was said to have had a net worth of around 3.5 billion US dollars, though today his wealth is only a fraction of that figure. On the 8th of April, 2020, his company, NMC Health, went into administration in the UK due to insolvency. Later that month, on the 27th of April, the Central Bank of the UAE ordered the seizure of all Shetty and his family's assets in the country. Tamar al Mishal approached Dr. Shetty, by now in India, for comment. He directed Al Jazeera to a statement issued two days after his assets had been seized in the UAE. The statement read, The series of events since December 2019 have shocked me as much as anyone else, including the LS fraud and misconduct at NMC, as well as the existence and extent of undisclosed company debts. To see everything that my family and I have strived to build over the past 45 years eroded over the course of a few short months and mainly due to the misconduct and wrongdoing of people I put so much trust in saddens me beyond words. I intend to work tirelessly to clear my name and assist any authorities in getting to the truth and help them ensure that misappropriated or missing funds are returned by the perpetrators to their rightful owners. On the 24th of July, 2020, Al Jazeera emailed Dr. Shetty to see if he had any further comment, but he did not reply. Uh, Dr. Shetty claims innocence in the events that have taken place. He is portraying himself as a victim. He is suggesting that third parties have fraudulently represented him and have forged his signature and effectively have, have defrauded him of assets. Um, I think 
it, it's not possible until the investigation is complete to identify the roles of the individuals. But I think it is, uh, there is a saying that there is no smoke without fire. Some of the other shareholders have made no comment so far and we don't know what their position is. Cynthia Omarahu was referring to Khalifa al Mahiri and Saeed al Kabesi. So they have not made any public comments apart from, I believe, Mr. Um, Khalifa has made comments uh, just to say that, uh, you know, he was not involved in any wrongdoing. But other than that, uh, they have not commented. Uh, they have, you know, they have kept out of the picture. شوف هؤلاء يعتبرون رجالات الشيخ منصور ومسؤولين في بوظبي. من أين حصل هذا الشخص الشاب 2.7 مليار دولار يعني مثلا ثروة سعيد القبيسي 2.7 مليار يعني 2.7 مليار وهذاك خليفة المهيري 1.7 مليار دولار وحاطينهم من أثرى أثرياء العالم في الإمارات وين جابوا الفلوس يا جماعة لأن في الإمارات ما حد يطلع بالطريقة هذه شاب صغير ومقتبل العمر وفجأة ينط لمليارات يعني كم تعرف أنت كم اثنيناتهم سبعة مليار درهم سبعة مليار درهم من موظفين كانوا وآخر تأخذون حصص في هذه الشركة وهاي حصص وهاي الشركة يمثلون من إذا من أين لك هذا هذا السؤال الآن خطر في هذه القضية خطر في القضية لأن خروجها العيان سيكشف كثير من القضايا اللي يعني الشعب ساكت عنها في الفترة الماضية بالتالي يعني المشكلة المشكلة أنها الأخطاء التي يقوم بها الشيخ منصور لا يمكن أن يمسها القضاء لأن الشيخ منصور هو رئيس دائرة المحاكم في بوظبي رئيس دائرة العدل بوظبي Al-Jazeera wrote to Sheikh Mansour through a UAE company of which he is a board member It asked him if as patron of Centurion Investments, he was aware of the high debt position of NMC Health. It also asked if Sheikh Mansour could comment on Dr. Shetty's assertion that, quote, serious fraud and wrongdoing appears to have taken place at NMC. Sheikh Mansour did not reply. تتعلق بالمحاكمة هل يوجد هناك أيضا قضاء مستقل هل يوجد هناك هيئات رقابية قوية في الإمارات قادرة عن على أن تحقق في هذه القضايا هل يوجد هناك تعاون يعني إحدى نقاط الخلل التي جاءت هل يوجد هناك تعاون ما بين الإمارات والدول الأخرى في الكشف عن هؤلاء الأشخاص أو تسليمهم أو حتى التحقيق في الأموال التي جاءت إلى الإمارات ومصادرها So giving that relationship why do you think Mr. B. R. Shetty chose to leave the country, I mean UAE, and head to India? I don't believe Dr. Shetty would do anything on his own. Uh, I believe that uh, he was probably given advice to leave. Uh, however, you know, the way things work in, in these Gulf countries is that the most senior people, the royal family, they own and they run everything. And if they want to protect someone, then that person's protected. While the B.R. Shetty empire is today a shadow of its former self, it is still partly intact. Whether the Shetty family can recover remains to be seen. From the day in December 2019 that the American short-selling firm Muddy Waters revealed NMC's vast debts and overstated profits, confidence in the UAE's first UK publicly listed company collapsed. Many questions remain. Where did the money go? Did it ever exist in the first place? And why did NMC's auditors not raise the alarm earlier? There are other broader questions about the corporate governance of this vast business empire. But ultimately, the true power behind this huge collapse may not yet have been identified. Until those missing links at the highest level are fully revealed, there may be no satisfactory conclusion to the dramatic story of the rise and fall 
of BR Shetty.